Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, today I will be talking about the Hungarian algorithm. Okay, so uh, let, let's have that algorithm in front of us. Now, what the Hungarian algorithm will do will be simply, it will so solve the assignment problem. Okay, so uh, let's recall what the assignment problem is. That's something that we saw yesterday. We have n tasks and n workers. And what we want is we want to assign each task to a worker. And all the tasks should be assigned. And every worker should have one assignment. OK, so this is, this is basically the problem that we defined. Now, uh, what we're going to see today is the algorithm that solves that problem. Yesterday, if you recall, we worked on the problem in a, a little bit. And we're going to see those again in the algorithm. So let me start with an example, with a motivating example. And this is the example where we have uh, the following problem that is uh, confronted by the coach of the swimming, t a certain swimming team. So the coach of the swimming team is trying to decide the 200 meter medley team. Now, what we mean by 200 meter medley is there are four different styles in swimming. One of them is uh, backstroke, backstroke, breaststroke, and then we have butterfly. Okay, like you remember, like it's, it's like jumping and, and freestyle, which is the, the regular style. So medley is a combination of those. Each of the, you, you are going to select four swimmers. Each swimmer is going to swim one of the styles. And um, basically, uh, uh, well, they are, they are going, each of them is going to swim 50 meters, excuse me. And the total will be 200 meters. So that's, that's the definition of 200 meter medley. And it's called 200 meter relay team. So uh, basically, uh, one swimmer is going to jump to the pool right after the other one hits the wall. There is a certain place that the, the swimmer should hit. Now, the coach of this swimming team is going to select who is going to swim which style. And that, that's a typical problem that is confronted. However, of course, usually you are going to have more than four swimmers who are eligible. So uh, in other words, you are going to have four swimmers, well, at least four swimmers in order to have the relay team. But uh, the coach probably is going to select from a larger group uh, to come up with the team. So let's say that we have five candidates, just to, to make the problem easy. And we have best times of each candidate, each swimmer for different styles. So we have a table which writes uh, those uh, style, uh, th those values. So let's start with backstroke. So we have backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly, and freestyle. And then we have five swimmers. And let me give their names. Ahmed, Derya, Isan, Turan, and Kenan. Now, of course, these names are fake, except Derya. You might be familiar with Derya. Derya is sort of like the best swimmer that uh, uh, that, that the Turkish team has seen over, over the last 20, 25 years. And he is very good in all of these styles, actually, compared to the others. 
but he has his best uh, styles as well. But of course, there will be some other people who are very good as well. Problem is, who is going to swim which style and who is going to leave the team? So we're going to select four person and we're going to assign each of them a certain style. So that's the role of the coach. Of course, we would like to select a team and a style and assign style so that the total time is going to be minimized. So the chances of that team is going to be more than the others. So let's write the times here. So we have 37.7, 43.4, 34.4, 3, these are all in seconds, and 29.2. And Daria has 32.9, 33.1, 28.5, and 26.4. And Isan has 33.8, 42.2, 38.9, and 29.6. To run 37.0, 34.7, 30.4, .4, and 28.5. And finally, Kenan, 35.4, 41.8, 33.6, and 31.1. OK. So, this is, this is the problem, and it is, it is a very reasonable problem in the sense that uh, uh, you can have probably more swimmers to make it more realistic. Here we have a certain peculiar case where Daria's scores are the best for each style, which is more or less the truth, actually, more or less, because I think his backstroke is not that good in general. Uh, so. Uh, the, this could have been a little bit different, but I think the numbers reflect reality with respect to what can happen. So you have one, uh, uh, a very high-end swimmer, like a star swimmer, who is going to swim everything in, very, very, in a very good way. And then you have good swimmers who are ready to make up the team. OK, any, any questions on what we are trying to solve? I think, I think it's more or less reasonable. OK. Now, of course, here we have four styles and five swimmers. So how are we going to manage this, this problem? How are we going to solve this problem? The assignment problem, as given to us, has n tasks and n workers. So how am I going to deal with that? Actually, it turns out that it is simple, because here, in this case, in order to make this a square matrix, a square system, 5 to 5 system rather than 4 to 5, what you're going to add is you're gonna, we're going to add a dummy style. And I'm going to call it dummy. So I'm going to assume that there are five styles. And I'm going to call it dummy. But what should I do with those? I should make sure that the effect of this dummy style is not going to be anything. So I have to make sure that all the swimmers have the same score in that dummy. And the total is not going to be affected. So how can I do this? I am going to have simply a dummy style where all the swimmers are perfect. OK? So you can see that now I have a 5 to 5 problem where I will assign four of them to real styles and the fifth one to the dummy style. Dummy style means that you are giving some honor to the person who is not selected to the team. Okay? You are saying that you also have a style to swim, but actually that person is out of the team. Okay? But that's how we manage the assignment. So if we had, for example, seven more swimmers, we would have seven more dummy styles. So this is, this is the way that we can adjust the, the definition of the problem to the problem statement which is given. OK, so uh, you can see that if you know how to handle this problem, then by small adjustments, you can handle anything. Now, of course, 
the other way around is not going to make sense in this case. In other words, if we had four styles and three swimmers, okay, then it wouldn't be meaningful for the problem. Why? Because then you cannot form a relay team. Okay? In order to be able to form a relay team, you have to have at least four swimmers. Any questions on this? Are you satisfied with the fact that this is not going to change anything? Okay. Of course, it requires a certain formal proof that we are not going to do, and you are not going to see in your undergraduate such things. But this is, of course, a it has a very simple proof. You can always show that by including this, you are not changing anything. Okay. Now, we ha this is the problem that we have. Now, how are we going to solve it? Yesterday, we have seen certain things. But now, today, let's look at the algorithm that we have in front of us and start reading it. Okay, so we are going to apply the steps of the algorithm. We applied certain of those steps. Uh, you want one as well? Okay. <coughs> we applied certain steps implicitly yesterday. We didn't, uh, it wasn't very obvious. But so we are going to go over those things again today. So the first step simply says that subtract the smallest number in each row for every number, from every number in that row. This is called row reduction. Now, why are, why are we doing this? If you recall, we are doing this because we want to obtain zeros. If you remember the last two, three sentences that I said yesterday. Now, if you have a number of zeros in this table instead of some positive numbers, those zeros are possibilities with respect to assignments. Because if they are zero, I know that it is the best that I can make. So, and yesterday we showed that by reducing each row or column by the same number is not going to change anything. Because basically, uh, uh, by subtracting 32.9 from the first one, we're not changing anything. It's only relative things are changing. What we are changing is, of course, the total value. But we are going to compute the total time at the end once we do the assignment. So let's apply the first step. The first step is subtract the smallest number. So here I'm going to have this, the, the step of the algorithm. So this means that I'm going to subtract 32.9 from every element in the first row. So I'm not going to write the rows again, but uh, I'll just write the numbers. So let's subtract 32.9. So we have 4.8, and we have 0, and then we have 0 0.9, and then we have 4.1 and 2.5, and we have 10.3, 0, 9.1, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 4.8, 0, 10.4, 1.9, 1 5.1. Of course, the second row, I'm, I'm subtracting the smallest number, which is 30, 33.1. The third row, the smallest number is 28.5. These are all, by chance, scores of Deria. It could have been somewhere else as well, of course. So this is the third one. The fourth one will be 2.8. 0, 3.2, 2.1, and 4.7. And the final one is 0. OK. Any, any questions on this? OK. Now, what does this mean? Remember yesterday's discussion. If I can have a 0 element that will assign each style to a worker after this step, it means that I obtain the optimal. But you can see from here that uh, this is not true. Because I'm looking at the first column. The only zero element is the last one. So if I assign that to the first swimmer, OK, and then what, I would be, uh, what, what should I eliminate? I should eliminate the first swimmer and the fifth style. And then the remaining should still be 
should still be, I, will be, I should be able to create a feasible thing among the remaining. But when you look at it actually, it turns out that you cannot. Because if you select, let's say, the second one here, this one, for example, uh, this one for Daria, and then all the others will be eliminated, we will be left with non-zero elements. Okay? So zeros are making this problem look a little bit simpler because you can visualize what's going on. If it is zero, it means that you can assign without any, any suspicion with respect to the uh, min minimization problem. Because once you assign the zero, it's the least that you can have. You cannot have less than that. Okay, so let's go to step one. Then at this point, we cannot obtain anything that will, be, that will make the problem uh, look simpler. O of course, we can obtain, by the way, we can obtain lower bounds and so on and so forth. Yesterday, if you recall that, we can obtain lower bounds, but it's not what we are looking for today. So now we are going to subtract the smallest number in each column. That's the second one. We're going to take each column and subtract the smallest number. Unfortunately, in this problem, where we have this dummy style, we are not going to have anything new from the second step. Because we have a dummy style already, which means that we already have zeros in every column. Okay, if, if for, for one line. So this is not going to help, but at least we can just say that we, we read that and we are going to pass that stage. Now, the third one simply says, look at your final table where and see whether an optimal assignment can be made. So this is something that I already discussed, but I will discuss more formally here. Now, what is the meaning of optimal assignment? Optimal assignment means that you're going to have a zero corresponding to every uh, style and a zero corresponding to every swimmer, okay? And this should be lined in such a way that each swimmer will have an assignment, and at the same time, each style will have a swimmer, okay? If we cannot do this, then we won't be able to find the solution. Now, of course, let's, let's exaggerate things a little bit. Let's say that all of them are zeros. All the elements that we see here are zeros. What does it mean? If everything is zero here, do we have a feasible assignment? If everything is zero, do we have a feasible assignment? Why no? Because we need to select four people, but the, all five people are eligible for the team, and they're equally eligible. For OK, but then we have feasible assignment, but we have more than one. So no is not a correct answer. No, it is, it is wrong. It's not partially correct because you said there is no solution. Okay? Can we find a solution? Yes, we can find a solution. We can find more than one solution, actually. Yes? Because we, we wouldn't have chosen the smallest value. Well, if everything is zero, it means that you are already... No, no, let's say that after subtraction, by, by some chance, we have equally good swimmers like Daria having exactly the same score. So when you subtract the minimum, you obtain all zeros. I, I'm just exaggerating a little bit in order to understand what's going on. If we have all zeros here, it means that each zero element means what? Each zero element means that you can do that assignment, and the cost is the minimum that you can get. So when, when I, for example, if I do this assignment, it means that this assignment is not going to cost me anything. This is the best that I can do. If you have all zeros, it means that any assignment, any assignment, first, first uh, style to the first swimmer, second style to the second swimmer, whatever, any assignment is going to be feasible and optimal if you have all zeros. It's, it's, it's an exaggeration. It's not going to be all zeros, of course. So a zero element is an element where uh, OK, please leave, leave the class. OK. OK, yeah, please. 
OK, so a zero element is an element from, from that, that, that side, please. OK, yeah. OK, a zero element is an element where if we do the assignment, OK, the assignment is going to be, of course, we cannot have a better assignment because it's, it, it's taking zero time and we are trying to minimize the total time. Yes. Hmm. Of course, yeah. Zero. It means that. Any any of the size. So if you but make any selection. It's not suitable for the optimal. Okay, I'm not talking about this problem. If I'm saying that at some point in time, if you have all zeros here, okay. Just by chance, if you have all zeros, it means that any selection is going to be as good as the other one. And they are all the best. Let's say that we have five Darias here, all the same scores for each style. Will it, be, will it matter if you put Daria 1 or Daria 2 for breaststroke? It doesn't matter. No, no, if, you have, or if all of them are Darias, all of them are 32.9, 33.1, and so on. It doesn't matter who you assign to. It means that you have a large number of alternative optimal solutions. But you have an optimal solution. Now, of course, in our case, if we look at this one, unfortunately, we are not going to have that. Now, the third step of the algorithm reads in the following way. So let's see how we are going to do that test. Test whether an optimal assignment can be made. You do this by determining the minimum number of lines to cover, cross out all zeros. If the number of lines equals to the number of rows, an optimal set of assignments is possible. In that case, go to step six. Otherwise, just go to step four. OK? So it simply says the following. So I am taking this table. Now, what I will do is I will draw lines that will cover zeros. OK? And I will explain why I'm doing that. And if that number is less than n, which is 5 in this case, then it means that I cannot obtain an optimal assignment with these zeros. OK. So in this case, how many lines do we need, minimum number of lines do we need to cover all zeros? OK. Well, one of them is going to be this one. Don't forget, we're talking about minimum number of lines. We're not talking about an arbitrary number of lines, but minimum. Now, and then this is going to be the second one. This means that, actually, I can only do two assignments in this problem, and I cannot assign the others. Either two strokes, or, or two styles, or two swimmers. OK? Th that, that's the meaning of the lines. Now, because you see, the way that I am doing this is very logical. Now, each line means that if you select one of the zeros in this line, along this line, it means that you won't be able to use this style for any other swimmer. That's the reason why we are drawing a line. So let's say that I selected this one for swimmer number three. So it means that this style is not going to be eligible for any other swimmer. So what I should do is I should simply cross all the other possibilities. So this is what I am doing, actually. So when you cross these, it means that you can, unfortunately, only assign one of the styles to Daria. It would have been very good if we let him swim by himself, actually. Okay. Well, thinking that he's not going to get tired, of course, which is not true. Uh, so, uh, but in that case, if I assign any of the styles to Daria, I won't be able to use Daria for other styles. So this line is doing this. Now, if by drawing these two lines, if you are covering all the zeros, it means that you are not going to be able to find a feasible assignment for the problem. What do I mean by feasible assignment? An assignment where well, I am only assigning zeros to different swimmers or to different styles. Only zeros. 
Because if it is a non-zero value, then I would never be sure that it will be optimal. OK? It might not be optimal. But if it is zero, I know that it's the best that I can do. And that's optimal, if I can do that. So minimum number of lines in this case will be two. And so it is, I, I unfortunately, I don't have any feasible uh, set to a sign. OK. Any questions on this? Yes. Minimum number of lines. Yeah. yeah, because you can actually. Doesn't matter. Minimum number of lines is, is the total that you can draw. Now, otherwise, for example, if I want to get across all the zeros, I can have one, two, three, four, five lines sideways and cross everything out. But the problem is symmetric. Okay? You have each swimmer should be assigned a style, and each style should be assigned a swimmer. So that's the reason why you look at the total number of lines. Any questions? Yes? I understand it's not possible because uh, it's less than five. Right? It's less than five. If, if we had five lines, the minimum would be five. Definitely, you would be able to find a solution. And we're going to see that, actually. If we can come to the end of the problem, we will see that. OK? Any questions? OK, let's go to step four. Now, this is basically something which is interesting. So step four, let's read that first. Now, we, we are consumed. Like, if you think what we did yesterday, OK, at this point, we don't know how to proceed. So this is going to tell us something new at this point. These are the things that I covered yesterday, actually, in, a, in an informal manner. Not in an algorithmic manner, but in an informal manner. Now, let's go to step four. Step four says the following. If the number of lines is less than the number of rows, modify the table in the following way. So now, it is less than five. So we are going to modify the table in the following way. Now, use the, this figure here. Subtract the smallest uncovered number from every uncovered number in the table. OK. Now, what I'm going to do is these are, I, I am already, I have already covered zeros. So the algorithm tells me to select the minimum number which is not covered. Now, covered means that I have these lines here. Now, luckily, all of them are covering zeros. I could have some numbers here. This is because of Daria creating this difficulty in this problem, because he has the best scores in everything. In reality, it would be distributed in a certain way among different swimmers. So when I cross one of them out, actually, I would be crossing some positive values as well. But let's look at the numbers that are not crossed. Now, it is simply saying that select the smallest one. Which one is the smallest? 0 0.9. Now, what we are going to do is simply the following. Now, at this point, I know that I don't have a feasible solution. Next thing that I will do is I will select the best possible value from the table, which is the least one, and make it 0, actually. That's, that's my aim now. I'm going to make that value 0 now. But how can I do this? Remember, I have row operations, column operations. But I have to make sure that it is not going to affect everything in an enormous way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract each row with 0 0.9 so that I will deduct everything equally from every row. And so actually, this is, this is the operation that I'm going to do. So subtract 0 0.9 from every row. OK? Now, what will happen when I subtract 0 0.9 from every row? The zeros are going to become 
negative, which is not something that I like. But they are going to become negative. So what I will do is, once I do this, then I am going to add 0 0.9 okay, to every row which has negative values. So what I will do is I will subtract 0 0.9 from everything. And then I will add 0 0.9 to the last row. This is the line that I crossed, actually. And I will add 0 0.9 to the second column, which is the other one that I crossed. So eventually, what I will do is, once I will subtract 0 0.9, and then zero at 0 0.9. So the net value is going to be still 0. OK? Except this one, the one which is in, in, the, in the crossing, because I will be subtracting once the first 0 0.9, then at 0 0.9 from the column operation, then add another 0 0.9 from the row operation. So this is going to be added by 0 0.9. So by doing this, this is basically part B. It says add the smallest uncovered number to the numbers at the intersections of covering lines. Intersections means that because I am sort of adding up two times. And so I am going to add 0 0.9 there. OK, so uh, if I do that, and let's read C. Numbers crossed out but not at the intersections of crossed out lines carry over unchanged to the next table. Why? Because if when I do these, all these operations together, the net change is not going to be anything for the zero rows. So the next table that I'm going to have will be simply uh, 3.9, OK, 0, 0. 3.2 and 1.6. And then I have uh, 9.4. Let me read from here, actually. That will be easier. 8.2, 0 0.7, 7 7.8, and 3.9, 0, 9.5, 1.0, and 4.2, and then I have 1.9, 0, 2.3, 1.2, 3.8, and then I have 0, 0 0.9 here because of that change, and this is what I have as my table now. Now, with all these operations, I didn't change much of the original problem. It's the same original problem. But I am simply obtaining another zero, at least one other zero in this problem that I, I will be able to make use of. I am basically getting rid of this zero, which is not very useful for me. And I will explain that why. Because basically, it shows redundancy. This is redundancy of Daria. Unfortunately, he is eligible for all the styles. And I know that I will be assigned, I will not assign him to the dummy style. He's very valuable. Okay, so that is becoming 0 0.9, which I don't care. Okay, so this is the way that the logic works actually. And now I have this new picture here. Okay, this is step four. Any questions on this? Still, it is the original uh, numbers, but slightly changed so that we will have, visually, we're going to have more zeros. Now, if I can obtain a feasible solution from these zeros, I'm set. Otherwise, I will continue on doing the same thing. So now, the algorithm tells me to go back to step three, OK? This is step five, simply says that repeat steps three and four until an optimal set of assignments can be obtained. So I am now going back to step three, checking the number of lines, the minimum number of lines this time. Now, how many lines do you think we will need this time? This time it will be three. 
because you can see that this would be one of them. And then I'm going to have this one as the other one. And then I am going to have, let's say, this one. Of course, you can have this one as well. It doesn't matter. But they are, they are still going to yield the same solution. So don't worry. Any, as long as it is the minimum, it doesn't matter which one you select. Now, this is three. So the minimum number of lines is equal to three. And still, it is not feasible because I am expecting it to be five. So what I will do is I will now proceed in the same way. So I am going to go to step four. Okay, Select the minimum in that table, which is not crossed. Okay, which one is that? 0 0.7. Okay, so I am going to subtract 0 0.7 from every element and then do the other thing so that we are always we always have non-zero elements. So you can see that at this point, I will be eventually, I will subtract 0 0.7 from everything. These numbers on, that, on the line is going to stay the same. But the ones which are in the intersection, so it is basically this one and this one, will be increased by 0 0.7. OK? So the next table then is going to be, let me write the next table. So we're going to have uh, OK, so uh, I am going to use the black now. So we're going to have 3.9. And uh, this is going to be 0, 0 0.7. 0, 3.2, 1.6, OK? And then I'm going to have 8.7, 0, 7.5, 0, and 7.1. And then I will have 3.2, 0, 8.8, uh, 0 0.3, 3.5. And then I will have 1.2, 0, 1.6, uh, 0 0.5, and 3.1. And then finally, I'm going to have 0, 1.6, and 0, 0, 0. OK? Now, we can carry this out. There is that there. there we're, we're going to have actually uh, two more steps. In the next step, we will have the minimum number of lines equal to four. And in the next, in the step, in the, in the forthcoming step, it will be five. And so this is actually how we are going to proceed and find the solution. So at this point, uh, you, you can actually complete this at home. But let me draw the lines here, by the way. So we have this one, this one, this one. And let's say that we can either have this one or this one. Doesn't matter, actually. One of them. So now I have four lines. Still, it is less than five. So I have to go one more step. Now, the optimal solution, let me write the optimal solution will have the following tables. So uh, I will only show you the table. So there will be some positive values here. There will be a 0 here, and positive value 0. And then I will have a positive value 0, positive value 0, and a positive value. And this is going to be positive value 0, positive value, positive value, positive value. And then finally, I'm going to have 0, 0, positive value, positive value, positive value. And 0, positive value, three of them, and another 0. Now, 
where x is a positive value and 0 is 0. O is 0, actually, I should say. So this will be the final table if you go one step further, which you can do at home, actually. Now, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines. The minimum number of lines that I can draw, I'm going to show that it will be actually 5. So let us see. Maybe, maybe you, you want me to do that. Now, the best way to draw lines is start with the column or row that has the most number of zeros and cross them out first. So we can cross this one like this. Okay. And then we can cross actually uh, this one like this. Okay, this should be zero as well, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, this should be zero. Sorry about that. Okay, so, and also we can actually draw this one. Okay, blue. And then you can see that we are going to have this one being drawn. And then I have this one and this one. So the total number of lines will be 5. Now, this means that I can find a feasible solution, which is actually the optimal solution. OK, so let us now make the assignment. So the rule to make the assignment is given in step number 6. It's very simple. It simply says that in order not to lose the possible assignments that you can make, it says, look at the columns or row and rows. If there is only one zero in that column or row, make that assignment. Because if you don't do that assignment, probably you are going to miss it. So let's look at in this case. Let's look at, for example, this row. How many zeros are there? There is only one zero. So I have to make this assignment. Now, once I make that assignment, I won't be able to use Darya again, OK? And I won't be able to use the third style again. But I have it here in, in square, so I know what I'm doing. OK, now next thing that I will do is once I do, I get rid of those, then again I look at the ones that have a single element in the row. So it will be this one. OK, now because I already, this is not uh, possible anymore. So I will get rid of this uh, uh, column and I will get rid of this row. So I am left with the three remaining rows. So from here, you can see that this is what I should be doing. OK. And so what I will do is I will cross this one and this one out. And then I'm left with these two possibilities, which is either, uh, let me look at it, because I may have made a mistake. Yeah, I think this is, this is positive. Yeah, this is not 0. This is positive. I changed that, if you recall. And I think, no, this is going to be positive. So the remaining one will be simple. I am going to select this one and this one. So let's review the assignments. OK. So the first one is backstroke. And who is assigned to backstroke? Assigned to Isan. And the second one is the breast stroke. And breast stroke is assigned to Turan. OK. And then the third one is butterfly. And this is assigned to Derya. Actually, this is what he swims usually in, in, the, in the medley. So all the numbers are made up so that he would swim a med butterfly. And then freestyle 
is which one? And uh, who is Ahmed is assigned to freestyle. And Kenan goes home without nothing. Now, of course, it is interesting. This, this is actually a very simple problem. And this algorithm solves that problem optimally. OK? Now, we are not going to prove that. You will never prove that in the undergraduate. But if you go to some graduate studies, you will learn how to make proofs of this sort. But this is actually a problem which is not, it looks again simple, but it's not that simple if you come to think of it, because you have a lot of different combinations. And here, we know that actually this is the optimal solution that we obtain. Now, you may be suspicious, and maybe you may want to check. Why is not Kenan included in the team? OK? Let's look at the numbers of Kenan. Okay. And let's compare Kenan's scores with the person who is selected to that position. Okay. So backstroke, Isan is selected. Kenan's score is worse than Isan. Okay. Breaststroke, Turan is selected. Okay. And Kenan's score is worse than uh, Turan. Butterfly Derya is selected. Well, we know that Kenan's score is worse than that. And finally, Freestyle Ahmed is selected. And we look at and find out that Kenan's score is worse than that. So actually, you can see that we're not going to gain anything by including Kenan to the team. OK? Of course, if, the, uh, if we have an order coming from somewhere else, OK, we might take him to the team for some other purposes. But looking at these scores, he wouldn't be eligible for the team. You can, you, this is actually one way of understanding the properties of, the, of, of optimal solution. Anybody who is not selected should have worse scores in every style compared to the ones who are selected. Am I right? Otherwise, they would be replacing that person. OK, any questions? Okay, I'll see you next week.